This is part one. Make sure you have your guided notes for part one in front of you before you continue with this video. So what is a fraction? Often students say things like a fraction is a pizza or a fraction is the shaded part. What we want students to understand is that a fraction is a number. Just like whole numbers are numbers, fractions are numbers as well. This orange one here indicates that on your guided notes for part one, number one has information for you to fill in that you can find here on this slide. So take a moment, find number one on your guided notes for part one and fill in the missing information. You can pause for a moment um, while you do that. Okay, fraction is a number. Specifically, it's a rational number. Rational numbers are any number that can be represented as the ratio of two integers. Fractions extend what students understand about the number system and allow for precision in describing and measuring quantities. So for example, say you walk more than one mile, but not quite two miles. To name that distance, we could use a fraction. A fraction can help us be more precise than a whole number can in some situations. So that is a, a reason or rationale you can use to help students understand why fractions are important, why they need to learn about fractions. There are five subconcepts of fractions, part whole, measure, quotient, operator, and ratio. We're going to focus on the part whole and the measurement subconcepts. When we teach students that fractions are part of a whole, we often use area model representations like these down here, which represent a fraction as um, a number of shaded parts out of a total number of shaded parts. So for the fraction 3 fourths, our denominator 4 tells us the total number of equal parts in a whole. See both of these shapes are split into four equal size parts. And the numerator, in this case 3, tells us the number of shaded parts or the number of used or counted parts. In both cases, it's three. Three shaded parts out of four equal size parts in total. Part of a set is a related concept. Um, we teach students that the denominator tells us the total number of objects in a set. So four total objects, four total objects. And the numerator represents the number of shaded objects or counted or used objects. In this case, three out of four and three out of four. When we teach students the measurement subconstruct, we often use length or number line visual representations. And we teach students that the denominator, um, still four, tells us the number of equal length segments in a whole. So if our whole is the distance between 0 and 1, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 equal length segments in the whole. And 3, the numerator, tells us the number of segments measured or counted. So 1, 2, 3 out of 4 equal length segments, and this point represents three-fourths, or the distance three-fourths between zero and one on the number line. The measurement subconcept is important for supporting students' magnitude understanding. Magnitude understanding is understanding fractions as numbers with magnitude. Um, fractions are numbers that can be ordered, compared, and represented by points on the number line. Note you've got number two on your guided notes here. You can pause, fill in the missing information, and come back. The magnitude of a fraction is determined by the relation between the numerator and the denominator, not by either part in isolation. And having a sense of fraction magnitude is strongly related to students' outcomes um, with fractions over time. Okay, some common errors that students make um, when they work with fractions are associated with undeveloped magnitude understanding. 
So when it comes to comparing and ordering fractions, one really common error that's associated with a lack of magnitude understanding is that students order or compare based on just looking at the numerators or just looking at the denominators. In this case, the student made an error by saying that one-fourth is greater than one-half because four is greater than two. So they're just looking at the denominators, not paying attention to the fraction as a whole. If we look a little bit more closely at this error, we see three fractions here, one-fifth, one-half, and one-ninth. To order these from least to greatest, if students made that same type of error, they might put the fractions in this order, one-half, one-fifth, one-ninth. See, these fractions are not in order from least to greatest, but if you were just paying attention to denominators, the student has ordered the denominators from least to greatest. Okay, we can see the same error here. So we've got three fractions. To put them in order from least to greatest, only paying attention to denominators would put them in this order, 2 7 7 eighths, and 4 ninths. Okay, to <clears throat> find the correct order, you have to think about the fraction as a whole. So the relation between the numerator and the denominator. This would be the correct error for the first set. One ninth is the smallest, followed by one fifth, and one half is the greatest in that set. And here, two sevenths, four ninths, and seven eighths. When we look at these sets of fractions on the number line, we can see their relative magnitude easily. So in this first set, 1 ninth, 1 fifth, and 1 half, we can clearly see that 1 half is the largest fraction, 1 fifth is smaller, and 1 ninth is the smallest. Um, for the second set, we see that 7 eighths is the largest, 4 ninths is the uh, in the middle, and 2 sevenths is the smallest. So like that number line representation, all types of visual representations are really helpful for helping build students' magnitude understanding and improve their performance with ordering, comparing, and all other types of fraction skills and tasks. So learning to use visual representations is really important. As students learn to use visual representations, we have to teach them what makes a good visual representation. So um, we're going to talk about how we can use visual representations to compare fractions and a good visual representation used to compare fractions has to represent both fractions in reference to the same unit. So what that means, if you look over here on the right, is that both fraction representations, in this case 3 fourths on top and 5 eighths down below, refer to the same unit. The bars are the same size, same length. One whole is the same here as it is here. So fractions have to refer to the same unit. Also, we need the correct number of equal size parts or segments for each model. So for the model for 3 fourths, we should have four equal size segments. And we do, one, two, three, four. And for 5 eighths, we should have eight equal size segments, and we can see that we have eight equal size segments here. And finally, we need the correct number of parts shaded or marked. So for three fourths, we should have three shaded parts out of four, and for five eighths, we should have five shaded parts out of eight. Okay, if we look down here at this example, again, we're comparing the same fractions, three fourths and five eighths, but our models do not refer to the same whole or the same unit. This one unit or one whole is a lot smaller than this one unit or one whole. So this representation creates a false impression that 5 eighths is actually greater than or more than 3 fourths, which we know is not true. 3 fourths is larger. So making sure that um, both representations refer to the same whole is really important. And in this example, we can see that um, 
both number lines refer to the same whole. The distance between 0 and 1 is the same for both uh, fraction, but the um, segments are not equal length. So in this case, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 segments to represent 3 fourths, but the segments are not equal in length. This one is much uh, larger or longer than these. And for 5 eighths, we've got 8 segments, but again, they're not all the same length. Some of these segments are much shorter and some are longer. So this representation also creates the false impression that 5 eighths is greater than 3 fourths. So representations really have to follow these rules for them to be helpful in regard to making comparisons, ordering, and then later operating with fractions. So we're going to look at how we can use visual representations to help students learn to make comparisons based on the magnitude of fractions and not just thinking about numerators or denominators in isolation. When we compare fractions, there are three possible types of comparisons. You can compare two fractions that have the same numerator but different denominators, fractions that have the same denominator and different numerators, or fractions that have different numerators and denominators. Okay, here's the first possible type of comparison. Same numerators, different denominators. Different denominators means different size parts. As the number of parts increase, the size of parts decrease. We can see that in our visual representation down here. We're comparing 5 eighths to 5 sixteenths. Same numerator, different denominators. This bar is split into eight equal size parts for the denominator of eight. This bar is split into 16 equal size parts for the denominator 16. Different denominators means different size parts, and we can see that the eighths are larger than the sixteenths. As the number of parts increase, the size of parts decrease. The same numerator means the same number of parts are shaded or counted. Okay, same numerator, 5 in both fractions, and in both fractions we've got 5 shaded parts. 5 shaded parts up here, 5 shaded parts down here. But again, the sixteenths are smaller parts than the eighths. So same numerator means same number of parts shaded. Um, but the sixteenths are smaller parts. So when fractions have the same numerator, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. And we can see that illustrated with our visual representations down here. This 4 indicates that you've got a guided notes item to fill in, so um, pause, take a moment to do that, and then come back. Okay, you're going to try it out. You're going to create a visual representation to model the rule when fractions have the same numerator, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. So on your guided notes number five, you're going to create visual representations to model three-fifths and three-eighths, and then you're going to use those to compare these fractions and write a greater than or a less than symbol here to show the comparison. Remember when you make your visual representations, your two representations have to refer to the same unit. You have to be careful you have the correct number of equal size parts or segments for each fraction and the correct number of parts shaded or marked for each fraction. So take a moment to make those visual representations, pause, and then when you start the video back, we'll check your work. Okay, here's our check. So here's a visual representation for 3 fifths. Here's a visual representation for 3 eighths. We've got 5 equal size parts with 3 shaded and 8 equal size parts with 3 shaded. Same numerator, 3 shaded parts in both cases, but our fifths are greater than our eighths, bigger parts for a smaller denominator. So when fractions have the same numerator, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. 
and we've got our comparison symbol here to show that 3 fifths is greater than 3 eighths. If you made number lines rather than bar models, this is what your work might look like. Um, we've got a mark here on the number line to show 3 out of 5 equal length segments and 3 out of 8 equal length segments. The second type of comparison is same denominator, different numerator. So we are now looking at a comparison between 5 eighths and 1 eighth. Both fractions have 8 in the denominator, same denominator, but different numerator. Same denominators mean same size parts. Okay, eighths, eighths. The eighths are the same size. Different numerators means different number of parts shaded or counted. So 5 eighths means 5 shaded, and 1 eighth means 1 shaded. More same size parts means a bigger fraction. So when fractions have the same denominators, the fraction with a larger numerator is greater. So you've got a note here, guided notes um, number six, pause, fill the missing information, and come back when you're ready. Okay, now we're going to model our next rule. When fractions have the same denominators, the fraction with the larger numerator is greater. For number seven on your guided notes sheet, you're gonna create visual representations to model the rule and compare one six and five six. So you're gonna make a model to show one six, make a model to show five six, and then write your comparison symbol here. Remember, your visual representations have to refer to the same unit, be the same size or length, have the correct number of equal sized parts or segments, and have the correct number of parts shaded or marked. So pause here, make your visual representations on your guided notes, and then come back to check. Okay, here's what your work should look like if you made bar models. We've got 1 6 compared to 5 6, and 5 6 is clearly greater. Here's what your work might look like if you made number line models. Okay, and then the final type of comparison that's possible is um, different numerators and different denominators. Different denominators mean different size parts, so in this case we're looking at three-fifths compared to two-thirds. Three-fifths means that this unit is split into five equal size parts and two-thirds the three on the denominator means that this unit is split into three equal size parts. Different numerators mean different number of parts shaded or counted. So three fifths means three shaded parts and two thirds means two shaded parts. Um, and we can see that two thirds is the greater fraction based on our visual representations here. But to do the comparison just using the numeric fractions, we would have to find um, common denominators and then refer back to rule number two, which told us that when fractions have the same denominator, the fraction with the greater numerator is the greater fraction. So to find common denominators, in this case, our common denominator would be 15. So I'd convert three-fifths to nine-fifteenths, and I could convert two-thirds to ten-fifteenths, and if I split both units into fifteen equal parts, I can clearly see here that nine-fifteenths um, is a little bit smaller than ten-fifteenths. Okay, we're going to compare or review our comparison rules. So you're going to go to number eight on your guided notes. Remember the rule, how you compare fractions that have the same numerator, but different denominators. So remember that rule and go ahead and fill in your comparison symbols for these two comparisons to show which is a greater which is the greater fraction. So pause here, make those comparisons on your guided note sheets, and then come back. 
Okay, here we can check. So our first comparison was 5 6 compared to 5 twelfths. We can see looking at our visual representation um, that 5 6 is the greater fraction. And if you think back to your rule, when fractions have the same numerator, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. Okay, if you apply that rule here, 2 thirds compared to 2 fifths, you should have said that 2 thirds is greater, same numerator, so smaller denominator is the greater fraction. Right, and we can see that's true with our models, 2 thirds is greater than 2 fifths. When fractions have the same numerators, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. Okay, now we're going to review same denominator, different numerators. So go to number 9 on your guided notes, take a moment, think about the rule, and make these comparisons. Pause and do that now, and then come back to check. Okay, 5 6 compared to 3 6, we can see that 5 6 is a greater fraction. Remember the rule, when fractions have the same denominator, the fraction with the greater numerator is the greater fraction. We can see that's true here. 5 6 is greater than 3 6. And again, thinking about the rule to compare fractions with the same denominator, we can see that 4 fifths is greater than 2 fifths. The next thing we're going to talk about is using benchmarks. The benchmark strategy is another really useful way to help students build fraction magnitude understanding. Benchmarks are numbers that can be used as reference points. Zero, one half, and one are useful benchmarks because students generally feel pretty comfortable with those numbers. You see you've got another guided notes item here. You can pause, find that number 10 on your guide note sheet, fill in the missing information, and um, come back. So you want students when they're using benchmarks to consider whether a fraction is closest to one of these benchmark numbers, 0, 1 half, or 1. This table um, defines these benchmarks and gives some examples to show us how to use them. So we've got 0, 1 half, and 1. For the fraction, or the benchmark, 1 half, we're talking about um, fractions where the numerator is half of the denominator. So here are a set of uh, fractions that are equivalent to 1 half. 1 half, 3 6, 12 24, 50 1 hundredths. In all cases, the numerator is half of the denominator. Um, for the number 1, the numerator and the denominator are the same. So these are some fractions equivalent to 1. 1 over 1, 2 over 2, or 2 halves, 49 40 ninths. These are all fractions that are equivalent to 1. Okay, we can also think about benchmarks as being useful when we're thinking about numbers that are a little bit greater than or a little bit less than one of our benchmarks. So for the number 0, when we're thinking about fractions that are a little bit more than 0, we're thinking about fractions where the numerator is very small in relation to the denominator. 1 29th, 6 two hundredths. In both examples here, we've got a very small numerator in relation to the size of the denominator. It means these are very small numbers. Thinking about 1 half, a number that is a little greater than 1 half is a fraction where the numerator is a little bit more than 1 half of the denominator. So for example, 5 eighths. Half of 8 is 4, and a fraction equivalent to 1 half would be 4 eighths. So 5 eighths is just a little bit more than 1 half. Half of 50 is 25. 27 is just a little bit more than 25, so 27 fiftieths is just a little bit more than 1 half. And for 1, a number that's a little greater than 1, or a fraction that's a little greater than 1, has a numerator that is a little bit larger than the denominator. So a fraction equivalent to 1 could be 12 twelfths. 14 twelfths is just a little bit bigger than 1. 
because the numerator is just a little bigger than the denominator. 68 60 fifths, this is a number just a little bit bigger than 1. Um, 65 60 fifths would be equivalent to 1, 68 60 fifths is just a little bit more. And then we want to think about numbers that are a little less than our benchmarks. A number that's a little bit less than one half, the numerator is a little less than half of the denominator. So four tenths, for example. Again, five tenths would be equivalent to one half. Four tenths is just a little less. And a little less than one, the numerator is a little less than the denominator. So 14 fifteenths. 15 fifteenths would be equivalent to 1, 14 fifteenths is just a little bit less than 1. Using benchmarks can be really helpful for making comparisons. So here we're making um, comparisons using 1 half as a benchmark. I can look at 5 6 and think to myself, well that's more than 1 half. I know that 3 6 is equivalent to 1 half, 5 6 is more than 1 half. And I'm comparing 5 6 to the fraction 5 tenths, which is equal to 1 half. So just using 1 half as a benchmark, I can say that 5 6 is greater than 5 tenths. And I can see that that's true when I look at these visual representations. 5 6 is greater than 5 tenths. Okay, I can use 1 half as a benchmark for this comparison as well. 7 eighths is more than 1 half. 4 eighths would be equivalent to 1 half. 7 eighths is more than 1 half. 3 sevenths is less than 1 half. Half of 7 would be 3 and a half. So 3 sevenths is just a little bit less than 1 half. So again, I'm looking at a fraction that is greater than 1 half and a fraction that is less than 1 half, and that makes a comparison easy. Okay, try this yourself. Go to number 11 on your guided notes and think about using one half as a benchmark to compare two fifths and five eighths and seven tenths and two ninths. Use one half as a benchmark, make those comparisons, and then come back so we can check your work. Okay, five eighths is greater than two fifths. How do I know that? Two fifths is less than one half. Half of five would be two and a half. So two fifths is less than one half. Five eighths is greater than one half. Four eighths is equivalent to one half. Five eighths is a little bit more than one half. Seven tenths is greater than two ninths. Again, using half as a benchmark, I know that seven tenths is more than one half. Um, five tenths would be equivalent to one half. So seven tenths is more and two ninths is less than one half. Half of nine would be four and a half. So two is less than four and a half, two ninths is less than one half. You can also use uh, benchmarks to order fractions. Again, we can use one half and think about whether each fraction in a set is more or less than one half. So in this case, we've got two sevenths, eight twelfths, and four eighths. I can say that 2 sevenths is less than 1 half, 8 twelfths is more than 1 half, and 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. And that makes it easy to put these numbers in order from least to greatest. Okay, I can look at them, um, look at these numbers using a visual representation to um, see them in order in the same way. 2 sevenths is less than 1 half, 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, and 8 twelfths is greater than 1 half. Okay, we're going to try this out in just a second. So, order from least to greatest. 10 twelfths, 3 ninths, and 5 tenths. 10 twelfths is more than 1 half, because 6 twelfths would be half, and 10 twelfths is more. 3 ninths is less than 1 half. Half of 9 is 4 and a half, and 3 is less than 4 and a half. And 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So to put these in order from least to greatest, I would put them in order 3 ninths, less than 1 half, 5 tenths, equivalent to 1 half, and 10 twelfths, more than 1 half. You try out this next um, set of fractions on your own. So put these in order from least to greatest using half as a benchmark to help you. 
You can do this on number 12 on your guided notes sheet. You can pause here and come back when you're ready to check your work. Okay, to put these in order from least to greatest, we would order them 1 fourth, 3 sixths, and then 4 sevenths. 1 fourth is less than 1 half, 3 sixths is equivalent to 1 half, and 4 sevenths is more than 1 half. Finally, benchmarks can be useful for estimating solutions to fraction arithmetic problems. Um, we can get a sense of what the solution to a problem is going to be using benchmarks. So for example, this problem 7 eighths minus 3 sevenths. I could think about 7 eighths as being about 1. I can think about 3 sevenths as being about 1 half. And then if I estimate my answer, about 1 minus about 1 half, I can say my answer should be about 1 half. If I were to do the actual computation, I would find common denominators. So for 7 eighths and 3 sevenths, my common denominator would be 56. Then to convert my fractions, I would end up with 49.56 for 7 eighths minus 24.56 for 3 sevenths. And I would get a difference of 2556. And again, thinking about benchmarks, 2550ths would be one half. And so 2556 is just about one half. So my estimation is really useful. Okay, here's another example. I've got 1 19th plus 2550ths. I'm going to use benchmarks to help me estimate an answer. 1 19th is a very small number, about zero. 24 fiftieths is really close to one half. Zero plus one half would give me one half. If I were to do the actual computation, I would end up with a common denominator of 950, and my fractions would convert to 50 950ths minus 456 minus 900 uh, over 950. For a solution of about 500 over about 950, um, 500 out of 1,000 would be 1 half, so 500 out of 950 is really close to 1 half. My estimation there was really useful. Okay, so in summary, fractions are numbers. When you make visual representations of fractions, it's really important that those representations refer to the same unit that you have the correct number of equal size parts or segments, and that you have the correct number of parts shaded or marked. When you compare fractions, you can use comparison rules. If fractions have the same numerator and different denominators, um, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater. If you've got fractions with the same denominators but different numerators, the fraction with the larger numerator is greater. And if you've got different numerators and denominators, you've got to find a common denominator, or you could try using a benchmark strategy. And again, using benchmarks, using um, the numbers 0, 1 half, and 1 to help estimate the magnitude of fractions. Okay, after watching this video and working through the guided notes, um, you're going to Go to number 13 on your guided notes to fill out a self-efficacy rating. After this session, how confident do you feel in your knowledge about creating fraction visual representations, comparing and ordering fractions, and using the benchmark strategy? Take a few minutes to fill that out before you move on to the next video.